Hey, what's going on guys? Jason Osborne, JO Vision, back again with another video. Today, we're talking about event photography. I know if you've been doing photography for long enough, you've probably been presented with an opportunity or two to shoot someone's event. Whether it be their birthday party, their corporate event, or maybe even their wedding, it's important to know what kind of gear to have, how to light your surroundings, and the attitude that you should have when you walk through the door. I'm gonna give you some tips to hopefully make your next event photography session a successful one. Coming up. All right, so let's just jump into it. Let's talk about lenses first, okay? What kind of lenses should you bring when you're shooting an event? Well, I will say this. You should definitely have a prime lens with you, either a 35 or a 50 millimeter. You should definitely have a uh, wide to telephoto lens, a 24 to 105 or a 24 to 70 would work. And if, if the situation calls for it, like weddings, I would suggest if you have one to bring your 70 to 200 uh, 2.8 or f4 if you have that and uh, the light conditions will allow for it there are different uses for each of these sets of lenses and i'm going to go over them quickly now so for the prime lenses i use them for group shots detail shots things like that they make great uh, sharp shots for group pictures during the reception of a wedding or a birthday party. They also make great lenses to capture details. I use my 50 millimeter 1.8 when I'm walking into a reception and I wanna get those close-up details of the table settings, of the cake. Um, when I wanna do details for the bride and the groom, I use my 50 millimeter 1.8. And for birthday parties, they make great uh, lenses to capture any details of the kids' uh, decorations that the parents have done in the house or um, any other kind of simple decorations that might be around in your surroundings. Make excellent lenses for low light conditions, especially during receptions when the light might be dim and uh, you might not have a lot of light to work with. So definitely think about using your prime lenses for that. For the wide to telephoto lenses, such as the 24 to 105 or the 24 to 70, they make excellent lenses because they are the workhorse lens. You can have it on your camera and probably shoot the whole entire event with that one lens. If you wanna take outside shots at the venue um, and capture the whole entire thing, you know, having a wide angle such as a 24 could definitely help you with that. Also, if you are shooting an event and you're not as close as you wanna be, having a 24 to 70 or a 24 to 105 to zoom in a little bit to get a better shot is definitely something that is beneficial uh, during an event. Um, if you have a lot of room and you know there's some walking distance between different occasions that are going on during that event, having a 70 to 200 is definitely a blessing because of something, a special moment, either with the bride and the groom, or maybe the birthday girl or boy, or maybe the corporate event that's going down is on the other end of the room and you know you won't have enough time to run over and get a good picture, having the 70 to 200 will allow you to stay in your place and get that zoom with a beautiful shot without having to move too far. And it can save you a lot of work as far as being able to have to run around and capture different moments because if you zoom in, you'll be able to get that moment and be able to stay put. Next, the most important question, how do I light my surroundings? What do I bring with me? Do I need flashes? Do I need um, you know, constant lights, things like that? Well, there's different ways to go about this, okay? For me personally, I always have a TTL on-camera flash with me whenever I bring, whenever I shoot events, even if it is during the daytime, because you just never know when you might have to go inside and capture a moment that the client might want, okay? It's definitely important to have flashes with you um, for uh, birthday style events, things like that. Usually, they're during the day, uh, and you can get away with just having one on-camera flash, um, and that's what I use for that. I have a TTL flash, I set it on TTL mode, and that way the flash will automatically adjust its power depending on the distance that uh, the light sensor reads when you initially take the shot. Now, I will say that if you are shooting a corporate event or a wedding where you're gonna have a lot of people, a wide open space, you're definitely gonna wanna have more than one flash with you. For me, I use a three flash setup when I shoot my weddings. I have two flashes on probably nine foot flash stands um, sitting across from each other on a dance floor pointing right at each other. And then I also have my on-camera flash. I set those flashes on my flash stands to manual. I set them up to a pretty powerful setting, maybe one is 1 16th, um, one to one eighth, depending on how dark it is in the venue. And then I use my on-camera flash as a fill flash. I've gotten beautiful results doing this and I highly recommend it. You can also use it for corporate events and if they have like a, a private party going on, um, if it's daytime though, you probably do not need 
the extra flashes on the flash stand. Now I've shot events where either the venue was very well lit and the extra flashes just overpowered everything or there's a lot of white uh, walls, white ceilings, low ceilings where my main camera flash was able to just bounce that light off and I got beautiful pictures that way. Sometimes you don't always need to have extra flashes with you but if you do know that you're going to be shooting a dark surrounding in a dark venue you're definitely going to want to have some extra flashes with you obviously there are different situations for different things like if you're shooting a club you're probably not going to be able to have your flash stands on the dance floor you know popped up nine foot in the air someone's definitely going to knock it over so you're going to have to make work with one on camera flash and night photography club photography is a little bit different than shooting a wedding or a corporate event so don't worry about that but if you are shooting a wedding or a corporate event and you're worried about not having enough flash power for the surrounding areas, you're definitely gonna to wanna to invest in some extra flashes. The attitude that you should have when you walk through the door. These are some general tips for event photography so you can make sure that your clients are very happy with your performance, your professionalism, and your attitude when you walk through the door. One, you're gonna to wanna to walk in and be the best friend to anyone and everyone, okay? You want people to feel comfortable. You don't want to be standoffish. You definitely don't want to have an attitude and you want to act like you're happy to be there and that you're ready to celebrate their moment or their occasion with them like you were actually an invited guest. If you go in and you just act like it's just another job, another routine, people won't feel connected to you. And on top of that, they might actually think that your pictures aren't as good as they might be just because they didn't have that emotional connection to you. So you want to make sure that you're friendly, very nice, and you're very respectable to everyone. And you also want to make sure that you make them feel like you're part of their day as well. The next tip I'm gonna offer is that you definitely want to see if you can either do your homework on the venue or visit the venue before you actually have the event. I know there are a lot of times where you can't actually get to the venue before uh, the event. So go on Google Maps, look at the uh, additional surroundings, see if there's any other pictures of the inside of the venue that you're gonna be in. Um, there's a lot of different ways that you can go about this. You can even call and see if their website um, you can call a venue and see if you can actually set up a time for you to visit yourself to say you're a photographer for the event. And a lot of times venues don't have a problem with you uh, showing up and just scouting out the area. If it's a church, you definitely want to see if you can do your homework on that. If it's a corporate event, um, you know, if it's in a business building, see if you can get into the building, let security have you walk you up to the room where the event's going to be, because you just want to know what you're walking into. You want to make sure you have your right equipment, the right flashes, the right everything. And if you don't know the venue, it's impossible to know that. Um, sometimes you do have to just go the day of and you have to see what it is. Um, I've done that before, but anytime that I've been able to visit the location of the event before uh, the actual event date, I've definitely have gone, taken a look. So another tip I'd give you as an event photographer is not to be a shy event photographer. People are definitely going to want their picture taken. And if you go up to a couple and ask to take their picture, a lot of times, almost every single time, they will say yes. They know they're at an event. They know they're at a wedding reception. They know they're at a corporate event. They know they're at a birthday party. They know that you were hired to take their picture. So no one is gonna say no. So if you are shy and timid and you only take pictures when you're asked to take pictures or you're not being proactive and searching out special moments that the client is gonna definitely want, you're, def you're not gonna get a good review. You have to make sure that you're being proactive when you're at the event and that you're just going up to people and asking to take their picture. If you see a cute couple, you know, sharing a tender moment on a dance floor during a reception, go up to them, just point to each other, they'll understand, they'll get together, they'll take two quick pics for you and you move on to the next couple. If you see a birthday girl, a birthday boy playing with their friends outside in the backyard during a birthday party, you know, Go up to them and just take a couple pictures without them even noticing. And if they're actually, you know, responsive enough, go up and say, hey kids, crack a little joke with them and see if they'll let you be cool and take their picture for them. A lot of times, people will always, always, always let you take their picture during an event because they know that's why you're there. And they also know if you were hired to take uh, pictures at this event that the person who's throwing the event obviously cares a lot about having the pictures so they don't want to let them down either so don't be shy when you're an event photographer and you always have to be proactive search out moments and if you can't find moments create moments you know you have to make sure that you're always there to capture the things that people are going to want to remember because that's why they hired you
So if you like this video, if you learned something today, please give me a thumbs up. You know I need my thumbs up. Thank you very much. If you have a comment or a question or any um, advice that I did not mention for other people who might be looking to do events, please leave it in the comment section below. I definitely appreciate that. If you haven't yet, please subscribe to the YouTube channel. I am back, like you see, this is my third week back in a row and I keep them coming for you. So thank you all to my visionaries for coming back and watching this uh, video. And if you haven't subscribed yet, I invite you to do so, so you can come back next week and watch that video. This is Jason Osborne, J-O Vision, and I'll catch y'all on the next video. I'll talk to you later. Peace.